Hey, greetings, performance reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. I've been working hard to do a review on this shark vacuum, and I really was hoping that after not seeing a shark vacuum on a workbench for a few years, that things would have improved. The more I got into the review, the more I realized this needed to be a subject of its own video. Because uh, I think a detailed explanation is really important before I publish a review. This explanation is going to take up about the same time as a review video. I am somewhat of a vacuum connoisseur, you might say. I have numerous vacuums to compare this to, all sorts of different shapes and size head designs. And I have a background in manufacturing, so I know a little bit about industrial design. And this is one of those products that is designed to look good in marketing material, not perform well. And it's evident by its design and some of the oversights. Before I get into it, I just want to talk about a standard nozzle design, which will normally have some sort of height mechanism on it. And what that does is allow the head to raise and lower. We'll have a spinning brush and often some sort of brush shut off. Sometimes this brush is controlled by its own motor. And on the bottom side of that, I think this is a really good example actually, we have a spinning brush. We have the intake, which should be center mounted ideally, but it's not off to one edge too far. This is pretty good. And then you have access to the goodies in there. And then the suction goes up there. And that's important for you to know when we're talking about the shark because this design, there's nothing wrong with it. It does everything you want it to do. Now this is a very basic nozzle. There's not even a spinning brush. Said you have brushes around that make contact with the floor, a wheel, suction in the middle, suction evenly distributed on the sides, and then the brushes go down and the metal plate will just make contact with carpet or area rugs. Very basic design. This sort of nozzle is available on more vacuums than I can name. This is another standard head design. This might be the gold standard. This is the Visselwork EBK360 platform. This one happens to be the Mila variant. But again, you have an adjustment. And then on the back side, the suction is in the middle. It's going up through the tube. And you notice the suction is distributed through the brush bar evenly. There happens to be a squeegee on this one which really aids in hard floor pickup along with edge cleaning. The other thing that's not really apparent on camera, but you can see it in person, is that the front of this dips down a little bit more. Now let's take a look at the Shark Duo Clean Nozzle. Let's flip it over, let's talk about it. Now, you notice it looks very different. One thing I will say that's a positive is we have center feed suction, that's always a good thing. Um, but then we get into some very strange territory, uh, particularly strange territory being that there's two brushes. Now they're not counter rotating, they're synced together. Or, um, and one of them comes out and this one, you notice it's two different colors. That's really gonna look great in ad literature. Uh, but you notice the first spinning brush, there's no way for the suction to get into it. That means this spinning brush here just spins, it's just for show. That's all it's going to do. There's no way for suction to actually get to this front brush, which makes this nothing more than a showpiece. So the actual cleaning is being done here with this brush. Um, and the bristles are very minimum. They're a lot smaller, a lot less aggressive than most. And they've opted for these fins, which are an interesting idea. Um, as you can see, the fins are kind of dirty. They, they don't really work. Spoiler alert, just doesn't really work. Um, and, and there's very little agitation in the middle of the brush roller, which means this has uneven cleaning, but in the center, not off to one side like we've seen before. Instead of a squeegee, they've opted for this brush here. And the problem with this brush is that this kind of creates extra static electricity. I've showed you the strangeness of the shark nozzle you can see why it's so different. And you can see why maybe Shark would be so proud to advertise this so much. Let's show you how this works in the real world. Now we're gonna put this machine through a series of tests. We're gonna do pet hair, 
breakfast cereal and fine sand and see how it does on hard floor. And then we're going to test some of the competitors to see how they do in comparison. First off, some breakfast cereal like you see in the advertisements. As you can see that it just kind of left that stuff behind and didn't really pick it all up. All right, let's see how the Hoover does. We have it on its hard floor setting. Well, that did what it's supposed to do. Let's see how the basic Henry does. Next, let's do the fine sand. Let's see how the shark does. Quite a bit of sand scattered on the floor. I realized it's hard to see because it scattered most of the sand behind it. and I didn't want to move the camera for consistency here, but it did scatter that sand around. Uh, kind of out of frame, so I'm sorry I wasn't able to capture that so well. I hope this close-up shot of it makes up for what I'm trying to describe here. I'd say that basic Hoover did it very well. Let's see how the Henry does. Let's see how the shark does on some large uh, pieces of pet hair. I want to show what happens here. So the idea is the stuff gets kicked off here and gets kicked into here. That's how this nozzle is supposed to work. The problem with that, as you can see when I turn it by hand, is the hair just gets embedded into this nozzle. And what happens eventually, is hair just is going to build up and this debris builds up in there, which is why the roller comes out for you to clean it. Uh, but unless you're doing this every use, um, stuff is just going to continue to get stuck in there. Let's see how the Hoover does on the large clumps of hair. Oops. That did it just fine. Give Henry a try on those large hair clumps. As usual, Henry just kind of does what you want it to do. No drama, no fuss. Let's give these a try on carpet, since all these machines are capable of doing carpet as well. Let's start with the large debris, the breakfast cereal. That Hoover did very well. It did knock a piece off to the side. Let's give the Henry a try. Next. Henry did well. Let's give our uh, shark a try. All 
And I want to show something that happens with the shark. And you'll notice there's grindings. The machine, the Cheerio's broken. That's broken, or Fruit Loops, or whatever brand the cereal this is. You notice it's broken because what it's doing is it's actually grinding it up to have to pick it up, which is an interesting idea. Except upon doing that, it's actually embedding some of the stuff into the carpet, and it could possibly scratch your hard floor if it was doing that on hard floor. Can't imagine it's great for carpet wear either. I'm not saying what I'm doing is science, but good science is repeatable. So let's do that exact same thing again and see what happens. And again, on the upstroke, that's what's happening. Now let's give it its backstroke. And once again, it snow plowed a bunch of that back there and it's ground stuff into the carpet. So what that means is, if we go in that same spot where it's been grinding the stuff into the carpet with something different. In fact, I've moved the microphone now. You're now on the Henry hose and let's see what you hear in the carpet from the shark. I think the sound of that speaks for itself. Well, let's do a fine debris pickup test and see how they are. And now the shark. Um, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to be so dramatic. So you can see the shark just kind of ground the stuff in the carpet. Um, it, I'm not sure how well it comes out on camera, but this particular sand isn't going to come out in one or two passes from carpet. This sort of stuff will require like two or three, four runs with any vacuum. So you can see the Henry left a little. You can see the Hoover left a little here. And you can see the shark just kind of scattered it right here. Before we move on to the pet hair, somebody is going to point out that the shark is somehow impaired by the amount of dirt we've picked up with it, which it is full. But I've actually picked up the most amount of debris with the Hoover because the Hoover has a height adjustment on it. So rather than waste your time why I set it for each thing, I've been manually setting and doing a test run with the Hoover. The Hoover has hardly anything in it. The bag is less than quarter full, maybe an eighth full at most. Uh, so it kind of also demonstrates the capacity difference between these. The Henry, I have no idea what the status of the Henry is. If you're not aware, Henry, Henry's hold a lot of debris. Um, yeah, there's like nothing in the Henry. Again, I mean, there's stuff in there from us picking it up. But there's nothing in it like it's not even uh, measurable how, what percentage full it is. So that gives you an idea also, bagged versus bagless. All right, appreciate all you folks hanging in there towards the end of the video. I've scattered some pet hair. Let's see how they do.
surprise, they all pick up pet hair on carpet. Pet hair is not something a vacuum should struggle with. Even cheap vacuums, like a shark. Well, I hope this look into the madness that is shark and their advertising and why adding mechanical complexity to a vacuum doesn't really make much sense at the end. Something simple like this Hoover or this Henry will continue to get the job done. Even though they're not as flashy and they don't have a spinning barber pole in the front of the machine, they're still going to get the job done. You're not going to have to empty them nearly as much and the maintenance will be less. So I hope this has helped give you a little insight of why the Shark Duo Clean heads really are just kind of a joke. And to anybody who's had a normal vacuum cleaner, why it doesn't impress. So thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. If you want to continue talking about this, check out the comment section below, but check out the description. We have a Discord server where we talk vacuums all day long. Check that out. Big thank you to our Patreons for making this video happen. Because of their support, we're able to get things like Shark on the channel. Make sure you're still subscribed with the bell notification. Have yourself a wonderful day.